Hello everyone and welcome back to this Cross Social Podcast. Today I am joined by Isam to talk about the ATS course in Leuven. Hello Isam. Hey, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. I guess, um, well, I'm joined by you, but we have two special guests in this episode. We speak with the winner of the women's race, Anna Kay, and the Spanish champion who got third in the men's elite race, Felipe Ort. So uh, Isam, your role today will be limited. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I think uh, they both had done an amazing race, so um, I think that they will have a very good addition to 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 the to the show. Let's start with the women's race, as we have the winner of that on our show. I will give a brief summary before we talk to her. So it was a very rapid start by Ellen van Looy, but in the first lap she immediately got overtaken by. Anna Kay, who then also immediately started applying the pressure on Van Looy. Van Looy got distanced, then started making taking risks, but made mistakes due to that. Also broke her bike in one of those mistakes. And ever since that, Anna Kay was in control and took home the win ahead of Ellen Van Looy, who still managed second. And behind that, we saw that Laura Verdomschot completed a comeback from the back end of the top 10 and claimed the last spot on the podium. No better way then to talk about this win than with the winner herself, Anna Kay, Anna, welcome on our show. Congratulations with your win. Thank you. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I can imagine it feels good coming back after your collarbone injury. Could you tell us a bit how that recovery went? Yeah, I mean, so it was, what, just under two months ago. Um, and yeah, I broke my collarbone and kind of had tore my ligament as well. So I had to get a big plate put in and then get a new ligament made. Um, so initially... Yeah, I thought it would be longer out, to be honest, because ligament damage is quite, can take quite a while. Um, but I had a really good surgeon who got everything back perfectly. And now it's probably stronger. And yeah, I trained pretty hard when I was at home. So probably put us in a, in, a, in a good place for now, I guess. And then after that, I saw you did a local race last week. And then in New, you made your comeback at the highest level. You ended in the top 10 there. I can assume you were very happy with that result. Yeah, I, I did a local race just to prepare myself, I guess. And then, yeah, on Thursday, it was the first kind of big race back. So I, I surprised myself. Um, I didn't expect to kind of be in the top 10, really, because it's so fast. That, like, the, the level's really high. So, um, yeah, it was a nice surprise. And then you came to the race in Lover today. There were quite some riders not there because they went to Tabor. Why weren't you uh, in Tabor for the World Cup? Well, obviously I raced on Thursday um, and I kind of thought rather than rushing back into like the highest level of racing after so long out, I thought, yeah, it probably would be better to just take it easy and, well, not easy, but yeah, not rest too soon and just maybe do a few of the races like before the World Cups, um, yeah, to prepare myself a bit better. Yeah, I think that's definitely a wise decision. And when you came at the start here today, were you coming here with the thought that you were going to win or would you have been happy with a podium in the at the end? Yeah, I mean, you go into a, to a race and, and look for that podium and stuff, but I kind of just wanted a good feeling and, and to feel like I have my rhythm back and, and get the technical bits right because I'm still a bit twitchy on some of the descents. Um, but, but yeah, it was it was a good feeling, so that's the main thing. Well, there were quite some tricky descents today, especially considering the rain. The parkour was pretty tricky, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really technical, especially when the rain started. Well, it rained pretty much the whole morning. So the whole bottom section was up and down and you were on and off your bike about five times. Um, and some of the descents really got rutted as well. So yeah, it, I enjoyed them type of bits on a course though, so it was good. We saw that the second pump track was one of the main issues for the riders. Could you tell us what made that pump track so difficult today? Yeah, because the bumps were really steep. So, like, you had to, like, push your bike into it. Otherwise, yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd go over your handlebars. And also it got really muddy in it as well. So sometimes your wheel would, like, slide off to the left or the right and you had, like, no control. Um, you had to kind of keep your weight really far back as well. We had to think about it. It definitely provided some struggles, but we could see that you were by far the rider who took them over, like the best. You were one of the only ones who was able to ride them. Like Ellen van Looy came halfway a couple of times, and then behind that, Maria Meller managed to do it, but the rest was running. So I thought that was super 
interesting to see as well as you bunny hopping the barriers did you have any like at some point you were walking them and then eventually in the last lap you were jumping them was this just coincidence or did you put thought behind that yeah um i kind of on the first few laps i thought i'm gonna try it and because i thought it's where i can make time up um but then once i got a bit of a gap i didn't really want to take any risks um so like the middle part of the race i i just walked well i just ran them and then on the last lap i hopped them because i thought yeah it's the last lap now so well a very controlled race by the looks of it did you have the feeling that you were in control or were you constantly pushing it to the absolute limit? No, I, I think I, I tried to control it. I didn't want to make any mistakes. Um, so you can't, you have to kind of go to your limit and not try and push over. Um, but yeah, I felt quite in control. I just try to ride my own race and, uh, and yeah, and, and enjoy it really. Well, good to see you on the top step of that podium. What's next for you now in the following week? Next weekend, I think it's a double weekend again. So it's um, it's Merck's class, uh, Super Prestige on Saturday and then Coxider World Cup on the Sunday, which I think I'll do. Um, we were going to decide this week whether I'll do it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's fun, the course there. It's hard, but um, yeah. And what goals would you have next week? Again, a top 10? Yeah, I guess the top 10 is always the goal. So yeah, a top 10 would, would be nice. Um, but yeah, we'll just see see what happens next week and if we look at the rest of this season do you have any goals because of course the classifications are very hard now considering you were out for a long time with that collarbone injury yeah i think my my goals have changed a little bit this season um i can't really go for any rankings because i'm out of the series now i've missed quite a few races so probably go more for the the races that suit me more so maybe target some of the races the days before the world cups like today and then hopefully build myself up for Worlds and for Nationals. Yeah, and then maybe some end-of-season races would uh, I can target as well. Which races on the calendar do you think suit you the best of what's left? In terms, for a World Cup, I like Namua. I liked Overice, so I was sad to miss that one. Um, I think Degum, I like that one. That's um, a night one in like the, the December, in the Christmas period. Um, and maybe Lowenhau, I haven't done that in a few years, but I, I know it's a really nice technical muddy course, so maybe that one as well. And in terms of training, what do you think you will need to improve going towards those races? I think I'm still lacking a little bit of like punch. And like on the start, I, I seem to, I can't get a, a, a good enough start. Um, but I think it's just, yeah, it's just the kick and the speed from the race. And so hopefully... The more racing I do, the, the better that comes on. And are you still lacking a bit of power in your shoulder following your collarbone injury? Because we've heard that is something that's pretty common if you've broken your collarbone. Yeah, um, I mean, to be honest, it, it feels stronger because the plate's so big and I've let I've really let the ligament heal. Um, and I, I had a, a really good physio at home um, who's helped us. I've definitely lost maybe a little bit of strength in my upper body. Um, but yeah as long as I can get a little bit of that back, um, then that's, that's all right. Well, that's really good to hear. And as I said, it was really nice to see you on the top step of, the, of that podium. It's not often that we see a non-Dutch or Belgian rider at the top step of a televised cross. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Often the top 10 is pretty much Dutch or Belgian rider, so um, the odd USA rider. So it's nice. It's good was really good to see you and uh, thank you for wanting to have a short chat with me uh, on your race. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck in the rest of your season. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that concludes our chat with Anna about her victory. But Isam, we can't say that we're surprised with that victory, are we? Uh, no, I think I think we joked of 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 the record um, yesterday about uh, what the gap is going to be um, of of her victory uh, compared to the second place, but it was with the field that was there it was almost a must for her to win uh, obviously uh, she only did one race i guess after the return so you cannot expect too much but in a way we we kind of did uh but you know nevertheless it was a, it was a good race good result and uh it she looked in control the whole race there was not a single moment that you would doubt her her to not win so 
I guess it was a very good job from Kay. Definitely a very good job, but I have to say Anna van Looy second. I think that's also worth mentioning for the rest of the top 10. I mean, sure, we'll pick out some names, but we have to say a lot of riders weren't there as they were in Tabor ready for the World Cup. And I mean, it's be there or be square. So we'll talk about the riders who were here. So let's start by talking about Anna van Looy. I think considering her age, 41 years old, she works as a nurse or at least to work too, now writes for a club team where she helps de- developing Belgian talent in the sport. I think all that together and then still coming second here. And of course, some people aren't here. But all the riders that are here, she does end second. And in my opinion, that's very nice to see. Yeah, indeed. And I think it was a bit of a shame that she made a couple of mistakes. It's a bit, um, you know, Van Looy has the tendency to make those mistakes, especially when it's a little bit more muddy and slippery. But overall... It was a, a very solid race from her and to hold on to that second place, obviously, uh, even with the field that was uh, that was there it was there in, in Leuven, it was still a very good result. So uh, nothing but respect for somebody that is uh, not even a full-time uh, cyclocross. Yeah, definitely. And especially like considering she is a nurse and they are much needed in these times. I remember the days that she used to work a night shift and then still come to the cross the race after and compete for a podium or sometimes even for a win that was really special to see and in those days she was actually fighting Laura for Donschot who is a lot younger only 25 years old but she's been struggling had a very rough summer so in a way it's good to see her somewhat refining her form just a couple of weeks ago she would not have been in front of Amaria Meller and Karen Verheestraat and Maud Kapteins but now she is so Good to see that, and especially the comeback in the last lap. She took, I think, 25 seconds on Meller, who was on the podium for almost the entire race. So that was also a shame to see her still fall off. Yeah, indeed. I mean, it was for for, for Donskot, I think, um, a very good day for her, obviously, to end up on the podium in a televised race, because it was televised in Belgium, uh, and also on Eurosport with the GCN, I think. But it was, uh, overall, it was, for her, we kind of didn't really see her in the race and then in the last lap she she gained so much on Meller and uh, it was a bit of a shame for Meller because like the way she was riding and the way she was holding on to the third place which was almost secured in a way and then to just yeah let it slip in the last lap was really uh, kind of hard to see and I had to do really with her but uh, I think she can be happy with that fourth place but I don't think she will be happy. <laughs> No, I think she really wanted that podium also for the Spectra team she rides for. They could have gotten a first podium in a televised cross, so in a way it's a shame to see. And sure, I mean, there were plenty of riders missing, but that gives other sponsors an opportunity to show themselves even more. And in a way, I think it's good. I mean, look at the ATS cross. It's a C2 race. Most C2 races don't get broadcasted. I mean, especially the foreign ones, they don't. So if you ride there... There's not really that much to get for sponsors except the local people, and that's not that many. Now it's like, okay, there's not as many people watching as for World Cup, but still plenty of Belgians watch it. It still gains a lot of exposure, so that's in a way good, and hopefully we can see in the future that more of these lower-level races, because in reality that's what the future of the ADS Cross looks to be, can be broadcasted, and that can attract a bit more sponsors. Let's run down our entire top 10. We had that win of Anna Kay in front of Ellen van Looy, Laura Verdomschat and Ameria Meller. Fifth place for Karen Verheesteraat ahead of Maud Kapteins. Then we find a British duo, Josie Nelson ahead of Xan Kries. Then Susanne Meistrock ended 9th and Sterre Vervloed rounded off the top 10. The rider who won the Pechvogel ATS trophy the last time out ends 10th now. So that's good improvement for her. And we would only like to touch up on Maud Kapteins here ending 6th. I mean talked about it she had surgery and that surgery was supposed to fix everything for her all the issues she had but i mean we have to be honest and draw conclusions cup times that cup times that we saw when she won all races in the beginning of the season won a world cup won the i think four races in the super prestige we won't see that cup times again yeah it, it will be very very hard for her to to actually come back on that level i i i guess and it's really a shame for her because uh, she had a lot of faith in that in that injury that it would or that that surgery that it would fix all the problems in a way but it just kind of shows that that you know sport can be hard uh, especially on, a, on an elite level and injuries can can have a huge impact so it's very 
it's very uh, important for the riders to stay in uh, in a good health and uh, yeah obviously a shame for her that she's not able to reach that level but i think regardless of of that it was not like a terrible race in a way i mean she still ended up sixth and it was it was a long way from from first but it was still a decent decent result but yeah i think um that she you know she has to be mentally very strong and and and, and maybe it will it will turn around for her but it's definitely looking very difficult right now. We of course shouldn't forget that she had some kind of crash in Neil, which probably affected her performance here because earlier this year in GP Destil, similar competition, she was able to compete or actually even win that race against Fukune. So, I mean, Fukune wasn't at the level that she is now, but still a shame to see Kaptein struggle like this. But I think for the rest, not really much to touch upon. I mean, sure, good performances by K Josie Nelson, Xan Kreese and Sterre Vloot, all under 23 riders in that top 10. I think Susanne Meisselk is a first year under 23, uh, no, first year elite. But yeah, I mean, good performances by them, but we simply don't know enough about them to really draw a conclusion of them without only looking at the results. Let's talk about the men's race briefly then. Also here, no surprises. Lauren Zweig took the win after attacking, I think, already in the second lap. There was Philippe Orts in second position who had a mechanical issue then. And after that, there was also a crash of Lokes. And basically, ever since then, we saw that Zweig rode away. And behind that, we saw Milse fighting it out with Orts, Soute and Bastans for the final positions on the podium. Bastans was the first to drop, he pulled out of the race, then we saw Suta getting dropped and Orts eventually dropped in the last lap from Tom Meuse, so that left us with the podium, Sveik, Meuse, Orts. That win, certainly no surprise this one. No, the win is definitely not a surprise and um, in a way it's a smart move from, from Sveik because, you know, it's a televised race like we talked about it and there is some exposure to this race, obviously um, there, was, there was not really something uh, else. That was big uh, for the cyclocross this Saturday, so I guess it's 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 not a not a bad mood to to go into a competition which is which you know already that you are a little bit better than the rest, and you can actually go in that race and 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 win the race with with ease because it was in the end it was with ease it was definitely not a easy parkour with with some muddy sections and very slippery in some sections as well tricky in a way. Uh, but in the end, he was in control and he maintained a very good pace over the course of the race. Yeah, I think for Sveik, I mean, he gets the exposure Paul Sousa wants. And I think Sveik, like, in the way he expresses himself, he is, like, really against an international World Cup. He likes being at home. I mean, I know he became a father recently, but he just likes being at home and driving to all the races with his camper van and not having long travels and stuff. He just doesn't seem to like that, which is a shame because he was even talking quite negative about Tabor that he doesn't see the added value of that for at least his season so I mean Tabor is a classic it should be respected shame to see that but anyway we should uh, focus on the battle between Meus and Orts for the final podium places and in what better way can we do that than to speak with Felipe Orts himself Felipe a great day for you getting your first podium in Belgium congratulations and welcome on our show hello everybody First of all, congratulations with your third place. You must be very happy with that result. Yeah, it's the best result for me in a Belgian race. I'm very happy. I think it's a historic day for me, for my team, for my country. I can imagine that you were fighting for a podium. You were even in the view of Sveik until you had a mechanical issue. What happened there? Yeah, in the second or three lap, I have a a little mechanic problem, but only only stay five seconds. No, no, it's a big problem. I try my bike, my bike, and the rest of of race is perfect. You and third, you were still fighting for second with Tom Meuse. Do you think that you could have beaten him without that mechanical problem? Yeah, I ride for staying in a in a podium. Uh, I think I I have idea that uh, Tom can win me in the last lap, but I ride uh, all my energy for staying in two or, or third place, but uh, I am happy for, for three plays, no, 
the second place is very good, but I prefer to stay in, in podium that for place. A podium was more important than the place itself. I can imagine that because I think it's a, maybe it's the first time in, or at least the first time in a very long time, a Spanish rider is on the podium of a Belgium race. Can you tell us what this means for cyclocross in your country? Yeah, I don't remember uh, another rider in in the podium. It's a big podium with Laurens Week and Tom Musen, historic riders. I am very happy to have a photo <laughs> with them. And cyclocross in Spain, how popular is it there? Yeah, uh, in, in the north of Spain, in Spanish, in Basque country, is very popular. I am in the sur, the Alicante. Now is uh, very popular, and we work for most popular in the future. And how is it as a Spanish rider that you need to travel a lot for all your races compared to Belgians who can basically stay at home? Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, all the Spanish riders need a long travel for staying in the big race in Belgium, but I think only need a uh, show in the, in the past. I never think that it's possible a Spanish rider in the podium. Today I start in the in the podium. I think this is the good good way for all of the, the next riders is possible better progression that that for the for the next years. And in 2024, the European Championships are going to be held in Pontevedra in Spain. I guess you must be very happy that you can race such an important race in your home country. Hopefully, in front of a lot of fans as well. I think that it's a big idea, the, a big competition in Spain is important for Spanish riders. It's very difficult for me uh, travel all weekends in Belgium and I think I am more strong in Spain than in Belgium. It's normally it's my home, my circuit, my people. Is that also why you are not going to Tabor because it's too hard to travel that far? No, tomorrow I race. Uh, it's the same. It's the same motivation. Uh, all weekends I travel two thousand kilometers for ride, and Belgium today uh, ride. O sea, travel uh, one hundred kilometers. Okay, one time in in all session. I every weekend I need rest. So it's for you not possible to race in Tabor tomorrow because it's very far away and very expensive. Yeah, it's possible, but it's very, very tired for travel. I prefer all energy today, ride for a top and tomorrow rest. My uh, World Cup studying no is good and it's, it's important for the UC points, but this year no is a objective. The objective this year is a hot good race in, in Belgium. Talking about podiums, you also ended on the podium of the World Championships under 23 in BLS. I think that was also an important moment in your career. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, this day changed my career. The next year I start a first uh, professional team in cyclocross. I think it's um, always need a, a, a little little good results for start a, a new era. Yeah, I think uh, it's definitely good to see you on the podium. I think you said it, like Belgian races, they can, like Belgians can race next to their home every time and you can't, you travel a lot, you put in a lot of effort, a lot of money, and then you get the result. We are very happy to see that. We always like to see other riders than Belgians on the podium. And certainly a Spanish one, especially if you have such a nice uh, Spanish champion kit. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very difficult for all all riders outside Belgium. All Belgian riders have a, a race, a one hour, two hours. Uh, for other riders, it's long to, to home, to family, to friends. It's difficult, but for those uh, today, Right, uh, starting in the podium is is the big prize for all effort. But how did you start cyclocross? Because in Spain there wasn't really a big name that was drawing the attention to the sport. Ah, yeah, I start my cyclocross career uh, with only ten years. 
is a very technical discipline. Always I have a, a good technical and enjoy the cycle race. Uh, I think my first year in Belofen, I come to, to Belgium for cyclocross and year, year and year, uh, I bet uh, I best progression. And now I think he's a good rider in the big race. And was there any rider before you who you looked up to? Like a rider before you, like maybe Sven Nijs, Kevin Powell's, who gave you motivation to start doing cyclocross and come to Belgium? Yeah, I remember many years ago uh, seeing TB at Tom Musen. And today between he and the podium is a big motivation for me. We can see you are a very technical rider on the pump track today. It was uh, pretty hard, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a good zone for me. It's closer to the final line. And I I found that it's a good place for attack at home. But my efforts in the last lap is just... You were, you were pretty tired. We could see uh, you giving it all. But as you said, getting that podium was more important than get the place on the podium i think also for your sponsor it's very important to see you on the podium yeah yeah i think it's very important for back the the whole effort a team are for me and uh, it's good it's big motivation for the spanish rider that uh, the spanish guy is in the in the podium and next weekend what race are you going to ride yeah, back in Belgium for Super Prestige in Merkplast and World Cup in Coxide. Do you like the parkour in Coxide? Is that something for you? No, no, it's good for me. Not like a, a sand. I prefer uh, the same condition that today in little mood and technical ride. What is your big goal for the rest of the season? I don't know. Uh, a big goal in this season is starting the podium. Now, I think uh, back for attempt a new new time in a in a podium. I last year I I had closet in Google game or Essen the right I need to ride no the big riders reserved for other race and I can uh, battle for the for the podium. I think had I I think we'll have other opportunities. And do you have a goal for the World Championships in the United States? I think it's a good race for me. It's long for everybody. And I think it's a good opportunity for me. I think the circuit no is perfect for me. But I ride for, for attempt a, a big result. Yeah, so would you be happy with the top 10 at the World Championships? Yeah, yeah. Never stay in the top 10 in elite ride. In Bogense, I battled for the top 10, but finally 12th place. And I won the st yeah, in the top 10. So the other goal I, I have. Okay, Felipe, thank you for joining us. And once again, congratulations with your third place. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I I think it's a big day for me. And now I have enjoyed the, the result. Well, let's look at the rest of our top 10. Then we had that win of Zweig in front of Meuse and Orts. Then we saw Dan Soet in fourth, ahead of Marcel Meijse, Joran Visur, and it's sixth, ahead of Leonard Belmans, Lander Lokes, eighth, Gerben Kuipers in ninth, and Jarno Bellens rounded off the top 10. So, Issam, I would like to talk here briefly about the riders of the Deschamps Group Hens Maas Containers team. We, they, we saw them here with big numbers. Their entire team was at the start because this is a home race for them. I think they can be happy with that podium of Meuse, who took his first podium in Belgium since 2019. But however, I do think like that the rest was kind of weird. I expected Dan Sute to be better. I expected Lander Lokes to be a bit better. And Vincent Passans, that was just weird Like in general. He was at the front. As soon as he got dropped, he just pulled out. And I'm thinking, like, mm, why are you coming here? If you're not going to finish the race, just go to Tower already. Yeah, I can only... Uh agree on that because I, I think personally that um, Suta was a little bit underperforming today um, the same can be said for Lokes especially Lokes could, could have been a, a little bit more up ahead in my opinion obviously both of them really didn't have the, the, the best of luck in a way in the race but 
yeah nevertheless um it was it was not a a good performance from those riders but i think uh, Musa kind of saved uh hans maas here um with 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 his second place and i think uh only that uh can be a very big up for for that team because i think Musa uh, obviously is, is someone that really tries hard to to have good results uh, this season, he had some couple of ups uh, in, in a way, especially with the Koppenberg getting six there. Uh, but, you know, then it still has to come out. And this is one of those races where you have a chance because I don't think you're going to have a race where you have the number one, two and three all crossing line over the finish and all uh, cheering and um, having high fives with the fans. So I think they were all three very happy that we're on the podium. And I think Hans Maas should be happy with the performance because... At least they got one guy on the podium there in their home race in Leuven. I can only agree with that. And I mean, for the rest, if you look, we, this is an opportunity for some young guys to show themselves. But then again, these are the young riders of the second row because the riders selected for the World Cup aren't here. I mean, Nair Belmont's put in a solid ride to end seventh here. Visura as well, continuing his good form, ending sixth here. And then as well, the same goes for Kuipers and especially Bellens, who is leaving the Tormans team at the end of the year. Good to see them up there as well. But, I mean, we can't really draw conclusions of, of them because we barely saw them in the race. And for the rest as well, I mean, Bellens has been riding B-tier races. It's even hard to find results of that. So, in a way, we can only like draw conclusions like if we see them race more the same as in the women's race. However, I would like to mention Thijs Aerts as a final part of this podcast. He was one of the favorites for today, but then eventually DNF. Did you know what happened to some, or do we have no clue? I, I think uh, I know as much as you do, because uh, I have no clue. Um, and it's a bit weird, to be honest, because then I don't know why... We, we, we didn't see him in the broadcast at all, I think, and uh, that is a bit of a shame, I guess, that he, you know... It must have happened somewhere in the first lap or something, but I, we, I didn't see any updates on the socials, so I have no idea what what really happened. Well, I guess we will find out in the following days then, so not his day then, but I guess that's all there is to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Isam, thank you for joining us. No worries, thank you for having me. And of course, thanks to Anna Kay and Philippe Orts, as said, for joining us today. Tomorrow we will be back with a more normal podcast about the World Cup in Tabor. Hopefully you guys will tune in then once again and we will see you guys then. Goodbye.